everybody, it's Steph here with Killer Sites. In this little vlog, I want to discuss the um, a fundamental idea of code. Now, the holy grail of coding is to have clean code that's modular and that is reusable. And that was actually one of the main points of object-oriented code, this concept that you would create objects that could be reused and you can reuse code. I can tell you, in real-world coding, having been coding since 1994, it's very rare that you're able to reuse a, a lot of code, especially business-level code, your business object layer. Usually that code is not very reusable. What's reusable is framework code, uh, structural code. But fortunately for us, much of this framework code, much of the structural code is written, especially when it comes to uh, web apps. So if you look at, let's say, in the uh, PHP world, uh, Laravel, Symfony, and other frameworks, they have their structural code uh, that you're going to reuse. You're going to use the framework code. And that's kind of cool. But again, uh, to migrate that, you sort of reuse that code, excuse me, within the context of the framework. But to reuse particular individual objects that you might pull out here, put it there, it's doable, but it's much more difficult than you would think. Um, and when you're coming down to writing actual products, actual uh, code bases that are used to for a particular application, so, you know, whatever, 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 whatever it may be, whether it be a web app or uh, an iPhone app or what have you, um, what you'll find is the code is not uh, terribly reusable except for some basic structural infrastructure code. Uh, so one friend of mine put it, uh, there's shitty code and shittier code. That's pretty much what coding is all about. So um, something I mentioned in a previous vlog, I don't know, it could be a few years now, I've been vlogging for a while. Um, I talked about uh, the reusable code within an MVC structure. MVC is Model View Controller. It's the standard way in which you design apps these days, web apps and whatnot. So you have your model code, your view code, and uh, model view, and your controller code. So the model code is basically your database uh, controlling code. Uh, the view code is basically what people see. So in the case of uh, web apps, that would be your HTML and your CSS. And you got your controller code. A controller code brokers the interaction between your views, your, your web pages, and your backend data objects and, and your logic. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So in that context, MVC, the controller code, the code that brokers between your views and your data objects, uh, that, that controller code won't be reused. That's what the throwaway code easily. Now, you can reuse views uh, and you modify them, you know, templated views, it's nothing new. So that's, you can reuse that and you can also reuse like your data access layer. And you see, you know, again, in, in frameworks like an ORM, an object relational mapping framework, therein is an example of some of your model code. That, of course, is reused if you use an ORM. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, clear up the theoretical discussions of reusable code, especially in the context of object-oriented programming, you'll find that only a part of your code can be reusable. And uh, especially when you're getting into your standard business application, most of the time, the code won't be reusable that you write, unless you're writing, you know, basic framework type of code. But these days, uh, this, the way that software is today, uh, you shouldn't be writing having to write framework code at this point. It's very rare. It's very rare. It should be once in a blue moon you should do it because it's a very expensive proposition. And it's a very time-consuming thing. Back when I cut my teeth coding in the 1990s, we used to have to do it all the time because these type of frameworks were very new or they weren't existing, especially in the early, early days. And uh, so there's a lot of development to be had. But th these days, uh, frameworks are very mature whether it be PHP Laravel, Java Spring, Ruby Rails, Python Django, 
and pick any other framework you want and you can argue about which framework is better than the other but this that's the real reusable code is these frameworks so uh, I wouldn't be so concerned about writing reusable code visa especially if you're building business apps if you're building a framework which 99.99999% of people should not be but if you find yourself yeah okay of course you're gonna be doing that um, but that's a whole other subject in, in of itself. I built my own MVC framework back in the 90s, you know, compared to modern frameworks like uh, Laravel and Spring and Rube Rails, it was very primitive, but it did a very good job for me. I used the 80-20 rule in developing my code base where I tried to solve 80% um, of the problems, you know, uh, with my code as opposed to trying to do everything. Because when you have a framework where you're trying to do everything, the complexity increases crazy, a crazy amount for that last 20% that you're trying to put into a framework. So you can get a heck of a lot of the problem solved in a framework by writing a, a fairly lightweight, nimble framework. That last 20% is where all the heavy duty lifting comes in, where all the heavy work comes in. If you're not sure about the 80-20 principle, I'm not explaining it well here. I've explained it in other videos where you just look it up on Wikipedia. And let me tell you, from my experience in coding and in business, the 80-20 rule works. Okay, the basic concept of the 80-20 rule is that 80% of your cost come from 20% of your expenses. So that's a business analogy. So if you look at your business, you may say, oh, 80% of my cost is really my employees. And the other 20% of my expenses are everything else. So you can look at maybe streamlining uh, what your employees do. I know this kind of evil, especially... Uh, in these days, we got a lot of outsourcing stuff, which is uh, could be very problematic for people. And I'm not necessarily a big advocate of that, but it, that's just an example. Uh, the 80-20 rule originally came from this, I think it was a 15th century economist, Italian economist, Pareto, I think his name was. It's been a while since I looked this up. And he discovered that 80% uh, of the wealth was concentrated in 20% of the population, which was like, for him, which was completely evil. Now, uh, compared to today, when or 90% of the wealth, something like that, is concentrated in 1% of the people, he would have, you know, he, he, he would have nightmares uh, given that situation. He thought, he thought that 80% of the wealth being concentrated with 20% of people was kind of bad. Imagine how he would feel about today. But you see that that rule applies in all areas of life. It's one of those universal principles. It's quite interesting. So in code, you'll find that 80% of your complexity will be in 20% of your objects, for instance. You know, 80% um, of the coding work will be in 20% of your, uh, your task. So it, it, it's, there's different ways you can slice it, but it's kind of interesting to look at your code base like that, to look at your business like that, to look at your costs like that, because it could save you a lot of time. Because the key is, is to focus in on that key 20% of it's costing you that 80% of the work, or that wasting 80% of your time, or burning 80% of your cost, your money. So if you can concentrate on a 20%, as well, you can get rid of most of, you can take care of most of the problem. That's what I would do with my framework. I had a framework that tried to concentrate on that 20% of the job that took up 80% of the time. And that was uh, UI, uh, it was data access, it was data validation. These were the three major components that takes up most of the time in most web apps. Because most web apps is collecting user data in forms, and these days in other ways too, but in forms, then massaging that data, filtering it, validating it, then putting it into some sort of database, some sort of data store, and then pulling that data out, massaging it, filtering it, and displaying it to a user. And that's like really 80% of it. So it's lots of database code used to, we used to, uh, used to do. These days you use an ORM tool and it saves you a lot of time. You got database, you got, excuse me, you got data validation libraries, you got authentication libraries built in there. And you got the whole uh, MVC structure in the case of web apps, whether it be a Laravel or a Rails or a Spring or whatnot, Django, they save a lot of time. So you can get so much more done today versus what the amount of work it took us to do things back, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Ciao.